Okay. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam, ala rasulillah. Okay, so continuing in our Maliki fiqh class, um, we were last week, we had started the bab, uh, or rather the kitab of salah or the chapter uh, about prayer. And I, my apologies for those. Uh, drinking is just my voice is barely holding together again, so I gotta I gotta keep it uh, semi semi lubricated. So we had begun looking at the chapter about salah, and uh, in particular, we were looking at the conditions of salah. And so now, uh, moving from the conditions of salah, we're going to now look at the the uh, at the end of the, or interspersed, the way that uh, Imam al-Majaji, hafizahullah, the way that he wrote the book is that you have kutub, right? So you have uh, chapters, major chapters, and then in those chapters you will have abawab, or you will have sub-chapters dealing with a more uh, granular look at something. And then interspersed through those, he will have what he calls fusul, or a fasl, which is like a detailed analysis of a per, of, of a particular thing, and so in this work, there's a fasl uh, looking at the mawaqit of salah uh, al khams. So in this is going to be a, a detailed look at the five daily prayers. So the Imam Hafidhullah he says what salati al al mafroodati waqt wahed. So for the five daily prayers that we have to do, there is one specific time, as he says, waqtun wahid fil jumla. There's one specific time in general that it should be done. Wahua waqtani fil tafsil. And that he said it is then divided into uh, two times. And he says what he calls uh, or what the madhab calls what waqt al ikhtiyar and also waqt at daruri so he's going to talk about there's the time that's called ikhtiyar and i'll help you know uh, explain what some of these uh, arabic technical terms are and waqt at daruri so for the first one or rather to, let's go back he says why is he says this is waqt wahid every time has its every every prayer has one specific time in general. So for instance, the Fajr prayer, or actually in the Madhab, specifically, Fajr can be thought of in two ways. It's the one that's done in the morning, obviously, but then in its specificity, Fajr is actually the two prayers that are done before the mandatory one. That one, according to the Madhab, is actually called what? Fajr. And then the mandatory one that we must do in the morning of two raka'ah is called a subah. But for all extents and purposes, we'll refer to it as fajr for now. So he said, every prayer, whether it's fajr, dhuhr, asr, maghrib, isha, each of those represents a time or what is referred to in the Arabic as a waqt. And then he says that then each of those waqt or those awqats Right, they are then further divided into what he calls waqtani, into two different times. One is al ikhtiyar and one is al darura. Okay, now the first one he says, waqt al ikhtiyar wa rafahiya wa waqt al darura huwa waqt al ma'adurin. Now the first one is sometimes articulated as a time of choice. Now, we have to unpack the word choice because it, it does use the word ikhtiyar or sometimes what is also referred to as al-mukhtar. Mukhtar and ikhtiyar means chosen, right? The, the time of choice. But one could be led to think that, well, you know, it's just one choice out of many, 
right? It's like going to a restaurant and, well, you know, there's a turkey sandwich and there's a tuna sandwich and there's a this sandwich and that sandwich. And these are all choices and no choice is any better than the other. That is not what is really meant here. And that I would say is actually preferred. The preferred choice. Um, and then the other time that is subdivided is the one that is called waqt daruri or darura. Darra means need or necessity. And then he further explains it. It's a time for the prayer to be done. Uh, 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 immediately unless there are people uh who have an excuse or rather the the prayer is done in the waqt dururi the prayer is done at this time because it is only done by people that had a valid excuse to delay it otherwise it should have been done earlier and so he says so now as it relates to the the time of choice and that's how I would really prefer to think of it, at least in the English, right? The waqt al-ikhtiyar فَهُوَ لَظُهَرْ مِنْ زَوَالِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَصِيرَ ذُلِّ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مِثْلَهُ مَعَ مُرَاعَةِ زِيَارَةِ الْفَيْءِ And so he says, as for the preferred time, the time of choice, it is specifically now for the dhuhr prayer, right? It is the time from when the the what we call the uh, the zawal so the sun you know as it rises in the morning and then it comes up and then when the sun is directly overhead this is not the same as what is on your phone right your phone will be like oh it's 12 o'clock well that 12 o'clock has nothing necessarily to do or not completely with the position of the sun and so once the sun rises and then begins to decline just even a small amount such that it begins to cast a shadow, right? Because when the sun is like directly overhead, there won't be any shadow. So when the decline of the sun, right, it, 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 when the shadow of the sun becomes the equivalent of its length. So let's say... I have this cup of tea here. Once the shadow casts that it is, and then it goes to the length is equal to the, let's say the cup is about, I don't know, five or six inches. Once the shadow is of that length, then this is the time of ikhtiyar. So from when the shadow was first cast until about the length of the object, right? This is the, this is the preferred time of choice. To pray, uh, and then he said, "This is what uh, this uh, this is with consideration of the time extension for precaution, meaning that there is a little buffer in there of 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 you know when you when when you can pray and it's still good, right? So let's just use a simple example right now because in real world application we're used to using." clocks and, and 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 that kind of thing so i'm just going to give a simple example and of course we're here in upland california depending on where you're at it may be different but for instance if we just take that this is right and this is all this is all an approximation but let's just say this is what it is that the sun will begin to cast a shadow at 12 37 p.m so from 1237 until the time that the sun can cast a shadow of this object equal to its length, this is the time of ikhtiyar. So let's say that might be anywhere from 1237 to maybe, I don't know, let's say, let's just say 245. If between 1237 and 245, the shadow is in between being cast and the length of the object, this is the time that's good. Now, after that, that's the daruri time. That's the time that uh, you should only be praying during that time 
if you have a legitimate excuse. Right? So he says, Ma'a Mura'ati Ziyarati Al Fay Wahua Dil Ladi Ayubka and Istawa Shams or Kubila Zawa. So it's you know related to the position uh, of the sun and how it casts uh a a shadow on the object. Now obviously this is also going to be somewhat dependent upon living in a place where the sun is strong enough that it casts a discernible uh, shadow. Some places, you know, with a lot of overcast or whatnot, might be somewhat more difficult to do. So then also, he says, وَيَدَخُلُوا وَقْتَ الْعَصَرْ عَنْدَ إِنْتِهَاءِ وَقْتَ الظُّهَرْ So now the preferred time for Asr begins immediately once the time of Dhuhr ends, right? And there's no separation. He says, uh, There's no separation between these two. So there's like no air gap between Dhuhr and Asr of which it's, uh, uh, you cannot pray. No, it just goes immediately one to the other. وَيَسْتَمِرُّ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَصِيرَ ظُلِّ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مِثْلَيْهِ وَهُوَ وَقْتُ إِسْفِرَارَ الشَّمْسِ And so he said that this, then you start right from where the sun had reached that length. And then once the sun starts to turn yellow, then now you're going to get into right, the other time period. And then Then the time for Maghrib starts the moment that the sun has completed its setting. And then there it will later on return back to this because there is a difference of opinion. Uh, in English, we will say, like for instance, there is uh, you know what what constitutes the horizon. So the horizon might be uh like a nautical horizon, like imagine you're on the ocean. Right, because it's all well. Of course, the Earth is curved, but generally it's all flat. And so, seeing the sunset there is not the same. Like maybe where I'm at, where there's a lot of buildings uh, that obscure, even mountains. When we have mountains here, the mountains could obscure. And so, well, if the sun goes behind the mountain, has it really set? Does this constitute right the setting of the sun? So these are things we'll return to. Uh, in a little bit more detail later on, but just setting the basics. So it's what? It is the يَدْخُلُوا وَقْتِ الْمَغْرَبْ بِتَمَامِ غُرُوبِ الشَّمْسِ ثُمَّ يَمْتَدُّ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا بِقَدْرِ مَا يُحَصِّلُوا الْمُصَلِّ شُرُوطِهَا مِنْ تَطَهَرْ وَالْلِبَاسِ And so that after that, once the sun has completed its setting, then a person should pray the Maghrib. And the Maghrib prayer only, and especially the, the ikhtiyar, right? The muhtar, the preferred time to pray Maghrib only lasts as long as it takes for a person to have tahara, to make wudu, so to speak, right? So that's why he mentions that it is shurutaha min al-tatahuri wal-libas, to make wudu, so to speak, and to put on the uh, appropriate clothes for prayer. And so, unlike some of the other prayers that have a more extended period for the preferred time to pray, the Maghrib one is very, very short. As well as allowing time for the Adhan to be called and for the Iqama to be called. Other than that, there should be, and of course, some people will, will cite an opinion of Imam al Shafi'i about delaying uh, the prayer for or for eating and for meals and, and whatnot. And so, we, again, we will circle back to those other uh, rukhas or those other dispensations or other opinions later, but we're just laying the foundation here. Then, of course, we have the Aisha. وَيَدْخُلُ وَقْتُ الْعِشَاءِ بِمُغَيِّبْ الشفق الأحمر الذي يعقب الغروب. So then, likewise, take this one out. 
When it comes to the Isha prayer, the last prayer in the evening, the time for Isha begins with the, the disappearance. Bi mughayyabi ashafaq al-ahmar. So when the red, when the color is, because when you typically, right, when the sun sets, not only is there light, but there's a little bit of color. And so once the color has gone from that, and there might still be a little bit of light, but the redness of that light has disappeared. Not the light itself, but the redness of the light. Then this is the beginning of the Isha prayer. <laughs> Right, and that it's gonna, and it follows immediately upon the the, the tale of Al Maghrib, ila an yadhuba thuluth layl al awwal, and it continues until perhaps uh, the first third of the night. All of that is considered the ikhtiyar time. Now the other two thirds are considered to pray the Isha prayer. They're going to be considered, that's the time of only the people that had an excuse to delay it. Right? If there's no excuse, then you pray it in the first third of the night. And then, فَهَذِهِ أَوْقَاتُ الصَّلَاةِ الْإِخْتِيَارِيَّةِ الَّتِي يَجُوزُ أَدَائِهَا فِي أَوَّلِهَا These are the ideal prayer times. The chosen ideal prayer times you can perform and within the within the time of ikhtiyar, you can pray it at the beginning, middle of the end, and there's no blame on you. So, as we said, let's say um, from 12.37 to 2.45 is the ikhtiyar time for dhuhr. And so there's going to be a middle, beginning, and end of that, let's say 12.37 and uh, 1.30 and 2.45. As long as you pray it within that time, the beginning, middle, or end of that is all considered the iftiyar time. And alhamdulillah. Otherwise, you're going to be a person that uh, needs to have an excuse to delay it more than that. Meaning that there's no harm upon you, there's no sin upon you. And so, however, it is more virtuous to initiate them at the very beginning that the prayer comes in. He said, except for dhuhr, ma ada al-dhuhr fi waqt al-har shadid. Except for dhuhr, if you live in a place of which there is extreme and excessive heat, and that's where you know, like where we live in here in Southern California. Uh, particularly in the Inland Empire, it can get really, really hot. And so for that one, then we, inshallah, we can, it says, for in al-mustahab al-ibrad biha bi ta'khiriha ila nahwi nusf al Then you can delay as much as halfway through the time period that you can pray the salah without there being any issue to allow it to, to cool off. Continuing, he cites the hadith of the Prophet Alayhi Sallallahu to again, because we said this book, and there are there are several others, but this book in particular is what? It's fiqh al-maliki wa adilatuhu. It's maliki fiqh according to proofs. The adilla are going to be brought by what? Awwalan al Quran, first the Quran, thaniyan aqwal nabi alayhi salam, secondly statements of the Prophet alayhi salam, wa thaniyan al ulama wa salaf, and then you know third it will be thalithan al ulama, lafad al ulama wa salaf. It will be like the statements of the salaf and also of the of the uh, of the scholars. So he says, "What li hadith ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu qal qult ya Rasulullah." And so he relates the hadith of of uh, uh, of Ibn Mas'ud, and he says, "Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, ayul amul ahabu ila Allah Taala, which deed is most beloved to Allah?" Qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet replied, "Al salatu ala waktiha, al salatu ala waktiha." And so he said, well, the prayer done at its time. <laughs> and so from this, 
Imam Malik and the other ulama of the madhab have said that's why we have the ikhtiyar and the ad darura we have the preferred and the you know the preferred time and then the time of having to have a legitimate excuse to delay it uh and so we should you know we should see this as one of the most beloved acts to allah when you pray the prayer early you know people always ask what can i do to please allah pray your prayer early strive as much as you can to pray your salawat in the earliest time as possible and this is something will be a habbu illallahi ta'ala insha'Allah this will be something very beloved to Allah he then continued radiallahu anhu qultu thumma ay and Mas'ud said okay then what after that qala sallallahu alayhi sallam birru al-walidayn it's interesting the prophet sallam said what then showing piety and good manners and good etiquette with your parents just had a young lady come in and ask me and she said you know i don't have a very good relationship with my father and he was abusive and he was this or that or you know and again these are things that uh i'm only getting from one side of the story and so i i, I have no means of confirming that these things are true or not but just taking them on the surface level she said you know i don't have a good relationship with my father and on and on, you know, do I have to have a relationship with him? And I said, yes, you do. Now, we can now have a further conversation to define and flesh out well, what is relationship. But there's no doubt that the Quran has made it clear. You have to be excellent to your parents. And this is not a transactional relationship. It is purely defined as one of the means by which we worship Allah. Being good to your parents is one of the means by which we worship Allah. Now, whether or not that will, you know, uh, result in, you know, you're having, a, uh, as I said, a TV dad relationship, well, that, that's something that is, you know, may or may not happen. And that uh, being dutiful to your parents doesn't mean that you always necessarily have to like everything that they do. And I'm not trying to wipe away the harm that your father did to you, nor am I even asking you in the case if it's legitimate that your father has been abusive, what, that you have to subject yourself to abuse. What I'm saying is at the very, very limit, that there's, or rather there is ultimately a limit, because she was like, well, I don't have a dad. I was like, no, you do. <laughs> you are not a test tube baby. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and Maryam, may Allah bless her, did not have a daughter that we know of right through a miraculous birth, right? So you have a father, I have a father, right? Uh, that you have this contentious relationship with your father, you know, may Allah repair it, and that is very regrettable. Um, you cannot go to the extreme of you cannot cut off the ties with the parent. And so it's interesting that the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked this question, you know, number one, which deeds are most beloved to Allah? What is salah ala waqtiha? Prayer done at its time, meaning its early time, and on time, right? And then secondly, birru al-walidayn, being dutiful and kind to your parents. Again, non-transactional, and as much as it can allow without bringing harm upon oneself, without uh, extraneous circumstances. And then radiallahu an Ibn Mas'ud said what? Qultu thumma ayqal alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa Then he said, well, then what about after that? And the Prophet alayhi sallam, replied, al-jihadu fi sabilillah, to make jihad in the way of Allah. And this is what our most beloved that he gave us his answer to him. Continuing in the fasl fi mawakit salah al-khams, going into more detail about the performance of the five daily prayers, so the definition we came up with what the preferred time that you do it when it comes in and on and on and on now well what does it mean for it to be the time of necessity so it is the time when delaying the prayer is not permissible 
unless there's a legitimate excuse. Aw durura, and that's why it's called durura. Or there is a necessity that he says tamna'uhu, yani tamna'u al musalli, right? Or there's some type of great need or urgency that prevents man ada'iha fi waqt al ikhtiyar that prevents the performing of it at the preferred time at the al mukhtar or the ikhtiyar time. And he says that like a woman, let's say she's on her mens, she's on her menst menstrual cycle, but then it ceases. And let's say it stops and she's determined that her period has stopped and it's very late uh, Asr time. And she was thinking like, oh, you know, I'm on my period, I, I'm not going to pray anyway, but then her period stops and she checks like, oh no, and I'm in the very, let's say there's only 20 minutes left before Maghrib would come in. She is in the Daruri time. So now she has a legitimate excuse to what? Make ghusl and then pray. And then alhamdulillah, there's no mafi ma'thur, there's no harm in her for doing this. So he lists a couple examples like this one, majnun, yufiq, like a person that lost their sanity for some reason, maybe they were overwhelmed by something, and then they come back to their senses, and it happens to be very, very late, but there's still time to do it. Okay, alhamdulillah, they do it. And again, ma fi ma'thur, nothing against them. And this part is really interesting, and I thought this was worth highlighting. Wal kafir, Yuslim. A person is a kafir. Let's say um, for instance, let's go back to the same thing, Asr time. It's very, very late. 20 minutes left for Asr. And a person takes their shahada. A person accepts Islam and there are only uh, 15, 20 minutes left. Well, that person has to then make ghusl and pray. They have an obligation immediately to pray. Another example could be like the Prophet ﷺ said what? Like when a Muslim drinks, they are a kafir. So a person, when a'udhu billah, drank alcohol. And then they sober up enough to realize what they did. They repent, they make their tawbah, they ask Allah for forgiveness, and they leave their state of kufr, and there's still 15 minutes left to pray the asr prayer, then they, he or she must pray. So, for instance, a young, a young man, or rather a boy, uh, let's say that the, a young boy in the, in, the, 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 in the middle of the night they have a wet dream this is now a sign incontrovertible sign they are mubalik, they are mukallif they are now of the age, their puberty has started no doubt they must now make ghusl and they must now pray even if they're in the Daruri uh, time of that prayer. Right? And so he says, وَالصَّبِي يَحْتَلِمُوا فِي هَذَا الْوَقْتِ If it occurs in that time and you're in the the the, the late time of that prayer, you got to get to it. وَهُوَ فِي ظُحْرَيْنِ مِنْ أَخْرِ وَقْتِ الْإِخْتِيَارِ لِكُلِّ مِنْهُمَا إِلَّا الْغُرُوبِ so he said, it is from the time of necessity, at darura that stretches from the last part of the preferred time for dhuhr, and then asr until sunset, and then similarly for isha until the, the break of dawn. He says, well, fil isha'ini kadharika ila tulu' al-fajr. Right, so uh, just for us to understand that this is highlighting the need to do our prayers. 
to do them early. And even if we didn't do them early, whether if we had an excuse, then alhamdulillah, then there's nothing against us or on us. But even if we don't have an excuse, we still have to do them. وفي الصبح من آه من آخر وقتها الاختيار إلى طلوع طلوع الشمس وبإنقضاء الوقت الضروري. Now this is where he gets into a little bit. He said what? And so, like for Fajr, it extends from the last part of its preferred time until the sunrise and the passing of the ضروري time or the time of necessity for each prayer. If someone, he says, well, من أدرك ركعة for a person that catches at least one raka'ah, one uh, unit of prayer, then they are considered to have caught the prayer itself, meaning that, let's say, I don't know, let's go back to our example. Uh, the ikhtiyar time, the preferred time to pray dhuhr is 1237 to 245. And so let's say the jama'ah, started the prayer or you come in the masjid and somebody's praying and they started the prayer in the very last part of the ikhtiyar time but then by the time they're in the last raka'ah let's say they're praying duhr so it's going to be four raka'ah four units of prayer by the time they're at the fourth prayer even in the jalsa they're at the very very end of it sitting on the ground right doing at tashahud and uh, I mean, rather, they're 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 doing the the uh, they're, they're before the the ruku, right? They're they're in the fourth one, but you know they're in the ruku, and you come in and you join them right then. But by the time they're in the fourth raka'ah and in the ruku, let's say now it is, I don't know, two fifty. We're now in the daruri time, but because the prayer itself started, then you catch it, then alhamdulillah, you're okay. I know these are all like, you know, some kind of like James Bondian scenarios of of doing it. But just to understand, it's all just to highlight the importance of doing the prayer. So he says, So if they missed it, right? If a person missed the prayer, then they have what's called qada. They must make it up, right? They must make it up if it was one of the obligatory prayers. You cannot make up any of the nawafil, right? And there, and we'll get a little bit later on. There's something particular amongst the Malikiyah that let's say if you missed the sunnah prayers of Fajr, and then after the sun rises between then and uh, <coughs> Dhuhr, what you would normally pray is the Duha prayer. We'll get to that later, but you can pray that, but it's not a makeup, right? It's not Qada. Then it is obligatory upon that person if they didn't do it, right? They, they must do that if they didn't do it. So this will cover now the times of the prayer, how... Every prayer is done. It has one time of the day that it's done. Like Fajr has its Fajr time. Dhuhr has its Dhuhr time. And on and on and on. But then for each of those prayers, there is a preferred time to do the prayer. And then there is a time where it should only be done unless there's a legitimate excuse. Otherwise, a person's in a blameworthy state. Even if you are, however, in a blameworthy state, there's still the obligation, uh, inshallah, to do it. So that will cover this small segment, and then we will return uh, in November to finish, uh, hopefully, inshallah, we'll be able to finish the Kitab of Salah, inshallah. Uh, we're going to take a quick 15-minute break, and then we'll be back for our reading of Sahih Muslim at 10.30, inshallah. So I'll see you guys in about uh, 15 minutes, inshallah.